On the show this week, we test ride the iconic Java motorcycle. Take a scenic road trip across Canada. And also tell you how to prep your car for the winters. Just a few weeks back, we witnessed the launch, well, relaunch of the Java brand here in India. The company revealed three new motorcycles, which included the 42, the Java and the Pirak. But the big question was how these bikes will be to ride. To answer that question, we head out to Udaipur. Few years back, I was in Czech Republic and I got few mementos without realizing that soon in India, I could get my hands on one of these. These are the two brand new motorcycles, the classic Java and the 42, reconstructed by the classic legends, soon to hit Indian market. Let's check them out. Before we delve into the present, here is a short history lesson. Back in 1929, Prantisek Janisek brought the motorcycle division of Wanderer. The name Java was derived by concatenating Janisek and Wanderer. Hence, Java was born. Over the years, Java became synonymous to robust and powerful motorcycles. In the 1960, Ideal Java was born in Mysore and the company started selling these bikes under the license. Thus began Java's Indian saga. Today, though Java is a brand new story, resurrected by classic legends, Java is back in the vogue with two brand spanking new motorcycles, namely the 42 and, well, the Java. Both the bikes share cycle parts amongst each other. The dual cradle frame houses the 300cc liquid cooled motor, which churns out 27 bhp and 28 newton meter of peak torque. Special mention here on how the company has been able to redesign the motor to resemble the engines of the past. Up front, there are telescopic forks. At the back, there are two gas charge shock absorbers. The front end gets disc brakes with ABS, while at the back, there is a drum brake setup. The Java's ride in the 18 inch front tires, and at the back, there are 70s. From there on, though the bike looks very different. The Java comes with a very retro design, which harks back to the past. The headlamp nacelle looks identical to the old one and the speedo unit sits atop. The meter looks smart and also houses a fuel gauge and a digital readout on the Odoo. The curvaceous front fender looks very cool and adding to the old world charm is the tail light which also resembles the one seen on the old bike. Bottom line, the Java looks like near carbon copy of the classic D250 model. This is where the 42 comes in as a modern iteration of the Java. The design looks more inclined to a scrambler and a different headlamp and the fender units differentiates the Java and the 42. A wider handlebar also comes in on the 42, which adds to the riding comfort. Under the skin, they are identical. The same 297cc engines power them both. It makes up 27 bhp and 28 newton meter torque and it is designed to produce a lovely low-end and strong mid-range performance. This bears out. The initial acceleration is easy and the middle-range torque is robust. On tight roads, you will work the slick six-speed gearbox. 
a bit to make the most of the mid range but in the most situations if you are not going for it the mid range is very likable if you go past 80 km per hour though you will feel the onset of the vibrations in the pegs not too much but you can feel them highway speeds just north of 100 km per hour will feel fine though there is some vibration you can chase down 125 km per hour if you like but the engine is pretty clear about one thing 125 is all right but 80 to 105 is best the suspension is the star of the package it feels almost too soft to start with but that gives the java and the 42 a very plush feel but then it surprises you by taking fairly large potholes in its stride the front forks really feel rather good the rear gas charged twin shocks offer only preload adjustability and they keep up handling is likable too the setup isn't overtly sharp but the java is responsive the feel is of an effortless little motorcycle uncomplex inviting and easy We didn't really push the Java hard into any corner but it felt good to take turns on. The 280 mm front disc is easy to use and the Continental ABS unit works well. The rear 153 cc drum is tuned well and obviously has no anti-lock system. Overall we would say that Java have come out with two rather interesting products which seem quite ready to take on the might of the competition. Booking have begun and we hear deliveries will begin January 2019. We give you a glimpse of our trans-Canadian expedition that took us on a picturesque journey across the second largest country in the world. We here at Auto Today love road trips. We have done some epic ones not just in India but around the globe as well. For our latest one, we headed to the other side of our beautiful blue planet to Canada. The North American country is the second largest in the world in terms of total area. What made this one epic you ask? Well, our trans-Canadian expedition took us from one end of Canada all the way across the length of this 9.98 million square kilometer landmass to the other end. from Quebec City towards the eastern end to Vancouver on the west coast covering a distance of more than 5000 kilometers being december it was quite obviously very cold with temperatures dipping to minus 60 degrees celsius in certain places and snow was a constant companion throughout the trip now all this might make this sound like a daunting task and maybe even a little daft to some but it was quite the opposite by the end of it we were left craving for some more of this winter wonderland sights warm hospitality food and roads and for good reason this epic road trip took us through the most prominent cities in canada including toronto Montreal and Vancouver and it took us to the most iconic landmarks of the country. 
It had us traverse some of the most picturesque roads we've ever driven on along the Great Lakes, snaking through the mountains across time zones. And that's not all, because along the way we also sampled scrumptious food, tasted some fine wine and treated our eyes to the truly stunning Canadian landscape. We got a glimpse into Canada and its people's history, its current ways and everything that makes it special. What you see on your screen is just a small trailer of our journey, a mere peek into this monumental trip. Over the next few episodes, we will take you deeper into Canada, taking you on a coast-to-coast -coast journey through its big cities, small towns, iconic locations, and all of Canada's must-see places. So join us next time as we travel along the Trans-Canadian Highway across this truly magnificent country and show you that Canada isn't just a great summer destination but a place for all seasons. Be sure to tune in to the Auto Today show over the coming weeks as we give you the lowdown on everything that should be on your list during your visit to Canada. And now for the news. The new Mahindra XUV 300. Nissan, which has officially opened bookings for its upcoming SUV. The kicks and more. All of it in this week's Auto News. Mahindra has unveiled the name of its highly anticipated sub 4 meter SUV, the new XUV 300. The new Mahindra XUV 300 will take on the likes of the Maruti Suzuki Vitara Brezza, Tata Nexon, Ford EcoSport and the likes. Previously codenamed S201, the new XUV 300 shares its platform with the Sangyong Tivoli and carries forward the cheetah-inspired design from the XUV 500. Up front, it gets integrated headlamps with the fog lamps forming a cheetah-like tear duct while the wheel arches are more pronounced like the muscular haunches of the cheetah. It also gets a modern grille, sculpted bonnet and LED DRLs and tail lamps. The new XUV 300 will come in both petrol and diesel engine options. <laughs> Nissan India has officially opened pre-bookings for its upcoming Kicks SUV at an initial token amount of 25,000 rupees. The India spec Nissan Kicks is different from the one available on sale in the global market and shares the Nissan Tirano platform but is definitely the better looking car. Nissan India has worked on the global model to make it more India friendly like the butch design up front and in the rear it gets a large in your face grille. The stance of the Kicks is also aggressive thanks to the 17 inch wheels while the overall design is composed with chrome at the right places. The Hyundai Creta rival will be launched in January 2019 and is targeted towards the new age urban adventure seekers. <laughs> McLaren Automotive expanded its Super Series product family with the introduction of a new model under the Track 25 business plan, the 720S Spider. Like all McLaren cars, the new 720S Spider has a carbon fibre structure at its core. The rearmost section of the upper structure is also unique to the Spider to accommodate the retractable hard top. Additionally, the header rail across the top of the windscreen has been revised to integrate the central latching mechanism. The 720S Spider comes with a 4-litre twin-turbocharged McLaren V8 engine that produces 710 bhp and 770 nm. 0 to 100 kmph is covered in just 2.9 seconds and 0 to 200 kmph takes 7.9 seconds. 
The 720S Spider boasts of a top speed of 341 kmph with a roof raised. And now it is time to bring in the auto advisor for some interesting do's and don'ts that one has to keep in mind for winter. From sipping on a hot cup of coffee to going on a long drive, there are many things that I really look forward to doing in the winters. But none of that is going to be possible unless the car is in top form. I'm Shivan Channa and today I'm going to talk to you about how to prep up your car for the winter season so that everything runs smoothly while you're warm, cozy and toasty inside. First things first, you need to pay good attention to the rubber parts of your car. So that includes the rubber parts in the doors and windows and also the belts and hoses in the engine bay. You see what happens is in the winters when the temperature drops, the rubber tends to get brittle, it tends to become hard and then eventually cracks. When the rubber cracks, then it makes the car susceptible to allowing water and air to enter inside. The rubber needs to be soft and bendy, not hard and brittle. So it's a good idea to treat the rubber parts of the car with a slight silicon product, which will ensure that the rubber remains pliant. Now next, it's important that you spare a moment for your tires and essentially check your brake rotors. If you find deep groovings, then I think it's time that you change your brake pads. When you're down there, Check the tyre for uneven tread wear using a coin. Just check the depth and if you find a lot of unevenness, then I think it's time that you rotate your tyres properly. Now imagine yourself lazing around in bed on a winter morning and suddenly someone comes and grabs you by the ear and tells you to go for a 10 mile run. That's exactly how your car feels when you get up in the morning and rev up the engine and rush to work. So don't do that. Give your car some time. Just put on the engine Wait for a couple of minutes, let the car warm up for the day and in the meantime you take a quick walk outside to check whether everything is lighting up properly and functioning well. Next, it's important to check your wipers. If they are stuck to the windscreen, just make sure that you warm up the inside of the car first before attempting to force the wipers off the glass. So to ensure that your wipers are running smoothly and cleaning well, all you need to do is just add a little bit of a softener or soap or shampoo to your windscreen washer and see the magic after that. You see, another major problem which you face in the winters is when the windscreens get fogged up. The way to do it is just increase the temperature of your blower, put on the fan, point it towards the windscreen and along with the heater, put on the AC as well and just see everything clearing up in front of you within a minute. So this was just a short list of things to look into to prep your car for the winters. And if you have checked all these points, you can be rest assured that the next time you go for a long romantic drive in the winters, at least your car won't have any performance issues. I'm Shivan Channa signing off. I'll see you next week. Next week on the show, it'll be the best of 2018. A look at all the best cars, the SUVs, the motorcycles and scooters that hit the roads in 2018. Don't forget to tune in to the year-end special of Auto Today.